Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Well, we are in Tucson, Arizona. I drove to Tucson yesterday, and we may have encountered some problems. I was actually telling someone the other day, wow, I'm surprised that nothing that I've wanted to do has really thrown any wrenches into the operation. I've gotten to do everything I've wanted to do until today. <laughs> um, well, first off, I wanted to go to Tucson Studios, and we can't go there because um, I noticed online that they are closed for pretty much the entirety of the month, so I'm guessing that there's something filming out there. Too bad, too, because McClintock was filmed out there with John Wayne. Um, I think Outlaw Josie Wales, Clint Eastwood, Three Amigos, all kinds of stuff was filmed at those studios. So, we can't go there. And then, one of the other things I wanted to vlog was movie location. So I stopped over there yesterday thinking that I might have trouble getting access and started talking to some people and they said, yeah, you know what, we'll let you do it. However, we have to check and find out what the schedule is for the facility so we can let you know when you can do it. Nobody will respond to them and let them know what the schedule is, so they can't let me go out there if they don't know what the schedule is. So I'm going to call them again in a little bit and uh, see if they have a final answer. If not, I can't do that one either. So I found <laughs> our third option, which is not here in Tucson at all. We'll actually drive all the way up to, uh, well, it's not that far, but up to Phoenix and hang a right and we'll go find something out there that's pretty cool. So either way, this will shake out to be something. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, unfortunately, our filming location vlog that I planned for today got canceled, but they told me if I come back through Tucson, I can do it next time. So I just basically came to Tucson for no reason, which is okay. I got a backup. We're going to Superstition Mountain. Oh, let's keep our eyes peeled. I just saw a sign that said, Tom Mix Monument Ahead. Didn't expect that. Here we go, right here at the this little picnic center. It says... In memory of Tom Mix, whose spirit left his body on this spot, and whose characterization and portrayals in life serve to better fix memories of the Old West and the minds of the living men. Wow, he died here. Here you can see people have left coins and everything. So over at this table, I just noticed they have pictures of Tom Mix, and it says, Western Star met his fate here 50 years ago. So basically what it's saying is that Tom was hanging out in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and then went to Tucson, stayed in the Santa Rita Hotel where he had made his name a few years before by riding a horse into the lobby. And he said he was coming towards Phoenix because he was to attend his grandson's christening and stopped at a bar out here, tied one on with a friend of his that was there and basically started driving down the road and drove through a construction barrier and uh, dove nose down into the dry sandy wash and flipped up on its side, his car. Huge cloud of dust obscured the vehicle as the sound of the crash faded. Wow. Now that definitely makes sense why I just drove by the Tom Mix wash. Here's the sign for the Tom Mix wash and then there's the wash right there. Now we're cruising through Florence by the Blue Mist Hotel. So if you're wondering, we're going out to Apache Junction now. I just saw that this property is for sale and I just, from the front of it I was going, that's awesome. That is totally worth somebody picking that up. So where we're at now is Superstition Mountain Museum, but I want to show you something they have on the grounds that's really cool here. So out this way there used to be a film studio called Apache Land Studios. Now unfortunately um, in like 2007 they had a fire and lost almost everything. Two things they didn't lose were a barn and this church. Now this church is really cool because this is the same church that they used for Elvis Presley's Charo, which was, I think most people widely consider his best movie. Now a couple of things about this movie are that Elvis was not even supposed to be in it. It was originally offered to Clint Eastwood, he ended up passing, and then Elvis signed on for it because Elvis loved the script. Now what's cool about this is they started filming on July 22nd of 1968, which means 
That would have been right after the 68 comeback special. I believe he filmed that in May and it was premiered in August. So this would have been like the first thing he did after. Now he didn't like the fact that they wanted him to wear a beard. He was kind of uncomfortable with it. And so all of his buddies that were on set and Colonel Parker and like all the crew, they all grew out beards to make him feel self-conscious about it. Um, but what else was pretty interesting about this movie was that he was really excited to do it because like I said, he loved the script and then the day that he showed up, he got really disappointed because they had changed the entire script and um, basically made it a whole different movie, taking out all of the parts that he liked about it. One of the things that he did do in this movie that I thought was really cool was he's a cowboy in this movie named Jess Wade and he's been accused of stealing a really expensive cannon, which he did do. He was part of like a, a gang of bandoliers or whatever and um, he ends up leaving that group because the head of that group's lady falls in love with Elvis. So he takes off and tries to go straight and everything and um, those guys eventually catch up to him and they have the cannon. So when they filmed it at Apache Land Studios, there was a whole town there and during the movie they're, they're like cannoning this town, like hitting different points and they do hit this church in there. They blow off that, that top <laughs> right up there and, um, but it looks like they obviously must have rebuilt it afterward. Now what's cool about this is that they have turned this church, since they had that fire and the church survived, they actually moved it over to this location now to save it, and it's an Elvis-themed church. So let's go in and take a look at the Elvis-themed church from Charo. Well, as soon as you walk in, you've got an Elvis Charo movie poster. And there's the cannon. Well, here we are. They have a big Elvis right there inside the chapel. And they're showing the movie up on the TV. And these are some of the movies that were filmed out at Apache Land. The Guns of a Stranger. Lust for Gold. Now, the movie wasn't even called Charo when they first were going to do it. They put that on right before it was released. And this was kind of unique because this is the first movie that Elvis wasn't forced to sing during. He did the title song that they play in the opening credits, but you don't see him sing at all on camera. Pretty good movie. I think most people widely dis have called this his best movie. Now what's kind of cool is that when the studio burned, they were able to salvage this piece, this cement piece that Patsy Montana um, put her footprints in and she was widely known as like the first woman of country music. She sold a million records and was a member of the famous WLS National Barn Dance from 1934 to 49. And then there she is. And there's Elvis. There's Winter Hawk. And here are some Blackfoot moccasins worn by Michael Dante. All right, so as we leave the church, we're gonna head into the little ghost town here. Here you can see the Superstition Mountain Coach. They believe there's gold still buried in that mountain. And then inside the museum, they have a bunch of maps that kind of lead you to it. it says these gallows were used in many movies at apache land movie studios from 1960 to 2004. do not climb on it violators will be hung you can see their stairs <laughs> so it's you know obviously tempting but we don't need any hangings the gallows now let's go take a look at the jail. Too bad that couldn't have been salvaged from the movie. The saloon or the jail or anything. Those were great scenes. When he's got Billy Roy locked up. Are you Billy Roy? Elvis is holding him captive in here throughout the end of the movie. Billy Roy makes that comment about you're still looking out the window for my brother. Always looking out for him. You don't know where he could be 5,000 miles away and you're still looking for him.
Here's our jailer with some Jesse James Wanted posters and Doc Holliday. All right, now let's see what's next to the sheriff's office here. Looks like the old Wells Fargo office. Ticket office for the trains. Looks like he's got some gold. And then over here we have the barber, it looks like. Nice hair. That's fantastic, dude. Look at all the coins on the ground. It said, Prospector Willie had a bad tooth. He also needed a shave. He only had money for one or the other. Can you help him today? Just toss a coin at one of the targets. Thanks for helping him. In case we have any fires out here, I guess. So here is the barn. You can also see that in the movie Charo. There would have been a, the church would have been right to the right of this where it was stationed. And at the very end of the movie, Elvis rides off on horseback with uh, the cannon. It would have been at Apache land at the time, but right off this direction. So there's the original barn and then the church originally would have been right over here. Cool old windmill though, huh? Let's go inside. Our general store here. Oh, cool. A lot of the stars that were making movies at Apache Land. Burt Lancaster, Jimmy Stewart, <laughs> Clint Eastwood, Steve McQueen, Waylon, Charlton Heston, Elizabeth Shue, also known as Allie from Karate Kid. Wow, some great names, Will Rogers. Johnny Crawford, well that was Chuck Connor's son. And of course Elvis. So let's check out the bunkhouse. This is kind of cool. There's like a Native American gentleman in here. Pretty cool, wow. All the detail, like the Civil War hats and stuff in there. It's pretty interesting. Look at that. So yeah, this was the Dutchman's hiding place. This is like, they used to hang out here looking for gold and, uh, and they found it see what's going on inside the saloon here. These guys look like they're up to no good. Are you guys up to any good? Hard to, uh, hard to get a gauge on what's going on in here. Wow, look at all the concrete slabs they have. Let's go check out who they have. I already saw one that I loved right away. That one's John Picard, or John Pickard. Not sure who that is. That's Denver Pyle, that's Uncle Jesse. From, uh, not Full House, from Dukes of Hazard. Come on, guys. Patricia Houston, Dan Haggerty, um, it says Jody, Jody McQuinn. Look at that, Nudie the Rodeo Taylor. Those are Peter Browns, and then right next to him is Jerry Van Dyke. Luther from Coach. <laughs> Clue Gulliger, check that one out. So that's what old Apache land would have looked like. And uh, in reality, if you went more like further up that road, that's where the church and the barn were a little further up there in the movies. And that's sad, that's showing how it was all destroyed. And that's the saloon that I was talking about. I thought would be really cool if that could have been saved. Take a look at all of this. These were all things that were out at Apache land that were able to be saved. I think I found where our undertaker hangs out. Why walk around half dead when we can bury you for $22.50? And here's a devil rope exhibit. 
basically known as barbed wire fencing. I am curious as to what happened to that cannon that they used in Charo now. You know another odd little tidbit about the movie Charo? The reason that Elvis is wearing that cowboy hat that he's wearing in the movie is because he was a fan of Bing Russell, Kurt Russell's father. So he wore that kind of as like a tribute to him and even told Kurt Russell, like, hey, let your dad know that I, I'm a fan of his and that's why I'm wearing that. <laughs> This stuff is really cool. I love checking this kind of stuff out. So here we have the Lost Dutchman Labyrinth and they said that this labyrinth was not a maze. What it was was it was a meditation center. So you would kind of like walk around the premises here, do your thinking, and then when you hit inspiration, you would uh, go to the center and ring this bell. Oh, it's a chuck wagon. Come and get it. Yeah, I don't really like to tell people what to do, man, but you might want to get out of the sun for a bit. What's so funny? Pretty freaking cool stop. You know, it's unfortunate that all my plans that were already set in motion for today got canceled but it was perfect because you know i wouldn't have found this and i got to come out and check out this and i do like the movie charo i do think it's probably his best so kind of cool to get to see one of the few one of the few actually there's only two buildings left from apache land this one and the barn right over there and they're both in that movie so pretty cool look at the art they've put in this tree Look at that, look at all that artwork. Now we're gonna head out of here, head towards Phoenix. There's a restaurant there that I wanna try out called Bobby Q's. Let's roll. And that is Superstition Mountain. We have made it to Bobby Q. Used to be known as Bobby McGee's. There's a reason I want to come here. So Bobby Q's is owned by a man named Bob Sakura, who's a uh, pretty well-known restaurateur here. And um, he was the best friend of Waylon Jennings. And so Waylon used to play way back at uh, one of Bob's early clubs called Mr. Lucky. I heard that the barbecue is amazing and that when Bob opened this, he did a lot of research before he ever even opened it just to nail a great barbecue recipe. So let's go in and try it out. And who knows, maybe we'll run into Jesse Coulter in there. All right, let's try out this, uh, what that sign says, barbecue heaven. I'm up for it. Well, let's give this a try. What do you say? So I just asked my waitress if Bob is ever in here and she goes, he's actually here right now, he's in a meeting. And I said, can I meet him? And she said, yeah, when he's done with the meeting, I'll send him right over to your table. So maybe we'll get to meet Bob together. All right, our food is here. I got the uh, pulled pork so I can try the barbecue sauce and some mac and cheese. So I just found out if you go to the Biltmore location of Bobby Q's, they actually have a mural of Waylon Jennings on the outside of the building. How cool is that? The verdict is that the food is freaking spectacular. Spectacular. Usually there's like one thing that they serve you everywhere I go where I'm like, ah, that could have been better. Here, everything's perfect. Even the macaroni and cheese isn't bland. Great job. All right, the food was amazing. Um, she was actually mistaken. It was one of the other co-owners that was here, but I told him I said I'd really love to meet and um, interview Bob if that's at all possible. So they said he doesn't have an email address, which I was like, good for him. Um, but they said they, they took my information and I said they'll pass it along to him. And um, I said mainly I'd really like to talk to him about Waylon and she said that's something he would really like to talk about. He loves to keep Waylon's memory alive. So 
You know, I doubt I'll hear back from him today, but I can always come back in the future. I mean, it's only one state away, so. I'm gonna hit it on the road now. I think there's one more thing that I wanna see today and show you guys. You guys up for it? Let's roll. And the food was phenomenal. We're entering California. Well, my friends, our last stop of the day. You might recognize this place. That's right, road trip is over. We are home. I wanna send big shout out thank yous to Janet Matthews, Sean Glosson, Starla Claiborne, and Bruce Sisk for making contributions to my channel. Hope you guys all enjoyed this trip. We'll do another one soon. Not real soon, but soon. Have a great night, everyone. Get some rest. Goodbye. Bye.